strikeout. Squidward goes on strike. In the second episode, Mr. Crab faces the consequences of his actions after SpongeBob leaves to start his own business, and Squidward goes on strike to protest the deplorable road conditions at the Krusty Krab. After confiding in his daughter, Pearl, Mr. Krab realizes that he brought the misfortune on himself and that he must change his management style or else risk losing the business. He hopes that by apologizing to SpongeBob and Squidward, he can convince them to return. However, SpongeBob and Squidward refuse to return unless their terms are met. Negotiations ensue with each explaining their interests and positions. Eventually, an agreement is reached with Mr. Krabs making the necessary concessions to please his key employees. Kind of me money, money sweeter than honey. Now wait a second. This is an atom up. Profits are down $3 from last week. I got to start running a tighter ship around here. Mr. Squidward? We have a problem. We've been losing money since my drop left. What's going on over here? Well, maybe if I had some help running this place, we wouldn't be in this position. Why don't you take over the register so I can get all these orders piling up? I don't get paid enough for this. Working at the cash register isn't so bad. I get to take money from customers, but I have to pay Squidward. How can I save money? This is ridiculous. I can't do everything on my own. The customers are unhappy. The food is burning and everyone is leaving to go eat SpongeBob's damn pretty patties. At least it's payday today. Hopefully I'll get a little extra something for my hard work. Ah, uh, yes, me meager restitution. Huh? What is this? What is there? Even less money than before? I got something for you. There's going to be a few changes around here. I need to cut costs, so I've decided to charge you for the use of the bathroom, for chatting with customers, and for standing around. No wonder SpongeBob lives. We've got to unite as workers and demand the respect we deserve from you. In fact, I'm going on strike. We'll see how well the business runs with no employees. A strike? And you're going to demand me respect? I refuse to be threatened by you. I'm the boss here. I can run this place on my own. I don't need you or SpongeBob. Look at me. Calling on my hands and knees, picking up chat. This is so much harder than I had imagined. Squidward and Spongebob were so good at their jobs. Maybe I should have been a better manager and boss of them. Now they're left and I have no customers and a failing business. I made a horrible mistake. Me employees left and me restaurant is empty. I should have been nicer to Squidward and Spongebob. But now it's too late and I'm ruined. I'll never make money again. Hi, Dad. Can I have some money to go shopping? Is something wrong? Everything is wrong. I don't know how to be good manager, and I don't know how to make my employees stay. Pearl, I don't think I'll ever recover from this. I should never have pushed Squidward and Spongebob past their limits. Oh, silly, of course you can make things better. The three of you are a team. I know Spongebob loves working here, and Squidward doesn't hit it as much as he says he does, but you have to change, Daddy. You need to treat them with respect and value their hard work. How do I change? I don't know where to start. I can help. You need to meet with both of them and try to understand why they left. You need to learn from your mistakes and change your old ways of doing things because it's obviously not working out. The only way they will agree to come back is if you agree to their terms. Hopefully by sitting down to communicate, you can all reach a mutual beneficial agreement. You really think this will work? I'm ready to make changes. And if it means negotiating with my employees, then I will gladly listen to what they have to say. I realize now how important they become and how much I rely on them. I need to apologize and make amends for my behavior. Yay! I'll go fetch them right now. I need to prepare. What would they want in return and how should I approach it? I have no leverage, so I'll probably make the most concession. Oh, oh, evening, Mr. Scudder and Swindler. Oh, I was hoping you two would drop by too. Beg you to come back to work. The Krusty Krab is a wreck. I'm ruined without you. And the little yellow guy. Oh, I missed you too, Mr. Krabs. If you want us to keep working here, we need to be treated fairly and you need to agree to our terms of, of employment. I realize that I need to make changes. We all have different interests that I want to meet. Hmm? You'll give us anything we want? Yes, anything. So what do you say? Shall we sit down and talk? This is what I want. 
I want you to to come back and help me make the Crusty Crab popular and profitable again. Mr. Krabs, I love working here, but you need to help me get a promotion. Please teach me how to be a manager. And one more thing, you need to hire Patrick. These are my terms. I expect to be paid fairly without ridiculous deductions, and I want to say in all decisions regarding the restaurant that will affect us. If I create a training program, hire Patrick, compensate you fairly, and consider your input regarding decisions, can you promise me to stop goofing around at work? A reward program would be nice too, but yes, if you stick to your promise, you won't leave. I'm glad you saw it our way, Mr. Krabs. Well, those were intense negotiations. Welcome back, little yellow guy. Oh, how I've missed working here. I'm so happy. I can't believe how much nicer it is having happy employees. In this episode, Mr. Crab realized the importance of the interdependence that is formed when a group of co-workers rely on each other to get their jobs done. After SpongeBob leaves and the business reaches the brink of failure, interdependence is a collaborative value that develops when a business builds a sense of community in the workforce and with the this the spirit of team support. The result is synergy, which enhances and strengthens team success. That success not only includes the number of goals accomplished and productivity achieved, but also happiness on the part of the employees. As profits begin falling and customers weren't returning, Mr. Krabs decides to take matters into his own hands by reallocating resources. This is an example of a decisional rule, specifically the resource allocator rule. Decisions made by managers have far-reaching effects as well as important performance implications. A good manager should be able to make a decision efficiently and comprehensively. Having taken into account all known information and potential consequences, Mr. Krabs exercised none of these, making a rash and selfish decision in a moment of utter panic. He decides to deduct pay from Squidward in order to save money, finding various ridiculous reasons to take even more. Squidward is only able to take so much and goes on strike, refusing to return unless Mr. Krabs makes a change in how he treats his employees and puts effort into understanding their needs. Mr. Krabs is faced with the hard reality that he needs his key employees in order to operate and that the only way to get them back is through negotiations about the terms of their employment. Employees will engage in negotiation with their employer if they are seeking individual tailored solutions or conflict resolution. Negotiation can resolve conflicts where more smoothly because the process revolves around the ability to proactively communicate and listen. One learns to understand not just the positions being adopted in a conflict, but also how to uncover the reasons behind the positions. The ability to resolve a conflict by striving to find a creative solution can only elevate the value of any individual, no matter their position in the organization.